We all know how we got here. We got here based on bad fiscal decisions, bad information we base those fiscal decisions on. But we are at a crossroads now. We have come out of last budget with a $113 million deficit. We went into this budget with significant holes from the start. And the upcoming biennium is already in deficit by close to $3 billion. Over the past four years, we've gone from one, with $1.6 billion of what was once operating expenses to bonding. And the reason for that is to circumvent the system and to make people think that we are spending less money than we are. And all of this is on the heels of the two largest tax increases in the state's history. What the deficits are looking like going forward. But here's the problem. In the third month of the fiscal year in September, there was a $103 million deficit. And that money was taken away from the people who needed it most. Hospitals, Medicaid, and the, and the disabled. We all felt strongly that that was unacceptable. So we are moving money that is not being used immediately. And you're right, that money is going to have, to have to be found at some point, but right now we have an immediate problem. Unfortunately, we have a long-term problem, a short-term problem, and an immediate problem. We have to prioritize that somehow. And to me and Senator Fasano and our caucuses, I know that our immediate problem is hospitals, Medicaid, and disabled people who need our help the most. But what we need to do is plan for the future of Connecticut in a way that we can come to consensus. And the way we do that is, is twofold. We not only fix the problem we're in now, because that's our statutory obligation, but we make structural changes so this state can sustain itself, for not for the next month, not for the next six months, but for generations to come. It's the short-term initiatives, the shortcuts that we're going to do to fill the gap. As you all know, we're trying to close the gap between 350 and 370 million dollars in fiscal year 2016 and 400 million at least at least uh, for 2017. There's 13 million dollars given to nursing homes. We're not touching that, but what wasn't talked about and was not part of the budget is a 4.8 million dollars that was unilaterally transferred to union nursing homes. That was nothing the legislature approved. It was just in a memo that we saw. We're saying, listen, let's put that back in. Competitively bid the correctional managed health care contract, which once again, oddly enough, has never been competitively bid. We spend millions of dollars on that health care plan, and we have never gone out to see how we can make it more efficient. Spending enacting a constitutional spending cap, and I know you might say, well, we already have that, but interestingly enough, in 1992, when the voters voted overwhelmingly for a constitutional spending cap, part of that language was that the legislature would follow up and put specific language as to defining it. And I know this might be shocking to everybody, but the legislature never did that. So that's why we have been kind of winging it since then and moving money left and right into different accounts. We moved $1.8 billion of pension liability from under the cap which by definition makes people think we're spending less money than we actually are. We talked time and time again about the fact that uh, there was a promise made 2012-13 budget that we would achieve $250 million of shared sacrifices and we've talked about that and you guys have written about that. You'll be happy to know that today we're not going to be looking at that number. Uh, that is not part of the conversation for today because we want to move forward. We're not going to look back and say, hey, this was promised never happened let's just move forward so that's what we're going to do if you look at tier two and tier two a for hazardous employees they pay about well they pay exactly four and five percent respectively towards the retirement system but tier two employees pay nothing and tier two a non-hazardous employees for both only pay about two percent in new england it's seven percent average we're saying listen so Tier 2 and 2 Tier A should pay about 4%. You know, at least pay something and take the 2% and go up a little bit. Those are the savings that would be achieved, $74 million. Cap of cost of living adjustments for future retirees, not current. Cap it at 3%. Calculate the final average of salary, not based upon overtime and vacation pay. When people accumulate their vacation pay, and they get a check, it's added to their salary. Well, you got a check. Why are we adding it to the salary? Doesn't make sense to us.
Another problem that we've seen for many years is the state's ability to manage its employees. Our, our hands are tied in many, in many situations, so we would like to open that up and allow the state to be able to manage in a, in a fiscally prudent way. We're proposing to remove 20 restrictive provisions, and for an example, we talk about proposing that a four-hour overtime stipulation be lowered to two hours. When you have to go in and, and say, take the place of somebody else or work overtime, you are, whether you work a half an hour or four hours, you get four hours of overtime. We are suggesting that go down to two hours. We're also proposing, which in our opinion is probably one of the most significant parts of these proposals, to institute a mandatory approval of labor contracts by the General Assembly. As you know, that does not occur now. And we believe that our need to approve that does several things. First of all, we don't believe that should be a decision just made <clears throat> excuse me, by one entity. Secondly, it allows the governor leverage in negotiating. So we would argue that it, it gives the, lo the governor's office more ability to negotiate a reasonable and fiscally prudent contract between the state and the unions. There are things we still believe should be talked about in the future, but our goal now is to try and come to a consensus with our Democrat colleagues and with the governor's office to see what we can do to move the state forward now and to make structural changes down the road.